Hello and welcome to lecture 5 of the second module of this course on accelerator physics. Today we learn about the accelerating structures. Uh, we learn about the pillbox cavity and the drift tube linac. In the last lecture we studied about the behavior of electromagnetic waves inside waveguides and cavities. In particular we studied about the rectangular waveguide, the cylindrical waveguide and also the rectangular and cylindrical cavities. So we saw that in a waveguide the wave forms a standing wave in the direction in which there are conducting boundaries in order to satisfy the boundary condition at these boundaries. In the direction in which there are no boundaries because the waveguide is open in one direction. So in that direction it is still a traveling wave. In a waveguide any frequency above the cutoff frequency is propagated. If the frequency of the electromagnetic wave in free space is below the cutoff frequency of the waveguide then it will be attenuated. The wave propagates in the waveguide in the field pattern of the modes that are allowed. So several modes are allowed. So for example in the wave uh, in the waveguide we saw rectangular waveguide we saw the TE10 mode the TE TM11 mode so different uh, different modes correspond to different frequencies and different field patterns so the wave the electromagnetic wave when it enters the waveguide so it will propagate in the field pattern of the modes that are allowed so in a cavity since there are conducting boundaries in all the three directions. So the cavity is now closed at the uh, closed in all the directions. So the electromagnetic wave here is a standing wave in all the three directions. There is no propagating wave and the standing wave is formed in all three directions. So here now unlike the waveguide where uh, if the frequency of the electromagnetic wave was above the cutoff frequency the wave could propagate here only discrete frequencies are allowed in a cavity. So only discrete frequencies, only at discrete frequencies of the modes the wave will enter the cavity and it will form the standing wave pattern corresponding to that mode. Any other frequency is reflected back. So today we will study about the uh, modes or the field patterns in a pillbox cavity. So a pillbox cavity is simply a simple cylindrical cavity that is made up of conducting material of length L and radius RC. So it's a simple cylinder, it's closed in all directions, okay, and uh, the length is L and the radius of the cavity is RC. So as you know, electromagnetic waves, when they enter inside the cavity, they will set up in TM or TE standing modes in order to satisfy the boundary condition. So TEM mode, as we have seen, is not possible either in a waveguide or a cavity, once it enters the cavity, the electromagnetic wave will be either a TM mode or a TE mode. And uh, I also mentioned in the last lecture that in a cavity, the TM uh, or TE here, the transverse refers to transverse with respect to the Z direction because there is no propagation. So it is transverse now with respect to the Z direction. For TM modes, the magnetic field component is perpendicular to the z direction. So you have for the TM mode the magnetic field which is in this direction. So you will have an EZ field. Okay. Similarly for TE mode the electric field component is perpendicular to the z direction and uh, you have EZ is equal to 0. Now in the pillbox cavity, the electric and magnetic fields everywhere, it should satisfy the boundary conditions. The boundary conditions as we have seen, uh, they are the tangential component of the electric field is zero at the boundary and the normal component of magnetic field is zero at the boundary. So this means that, so these are the cavity walls and this is the side wall. These are here the side walls of the cavity. So in order to satisfy the boundary condition, Ez is equal to 0 at the cavity walls. Now when you have Ez, so at this cavity wall here, Ez is the tangential component. So it should be equal to 0. Okay. Similarly, E theta is equal to 0 at the cavity wall. So E theta will again be like this. So again it will be tangential component. So E theta will be tangential component at this boundary. So it should be 0. 
ER is equal to 0 at the side wall. So if you have ER, it will be in this direction. Okay. Now at this boundary, it is the normal component. So it need not be 0. However, at this boundary, at the end wall boundary, it is the tangential component. So it should be equal to 0. Similarly, for magnetic fields, BZ is equal to 0 at the side wall. So BZ is this component. So at uh, for the cavity walls here, it is the tangential component and tangential component of magnetic field need not be 0. The normal component of magnetic field is 0. So however, at the end walls, at the two end walls, it is a normal component and it has to be 0. B theta is allowed at all the walls because at the side at the cavity walls b theta is the tangential component also at the end walls it is the tangential component and by boundary condition it is allowed br is equal to 0 at the cavity wall br is in this direction so at this boundary here it is the normal component and normal component of magnetic field is not allowed so br is equal to 0 at the cavity wall so with this understanding of the boundary conditions in a pillbox cavity, let us see the different modes in the cavity. So as we discussed in the last lecture, the for the TM mode, BZ is equal to 0. So EZ will exist. Now EZ, if you see, in the radial direction, it has a Bessel function dependence. Whereas in the theta and Z direction, uh, it has a cosine dependence. And being a, uh, it's a standing wave, so uh, there is no propagation in any direction okay so here the frequency of the uh, mode is given by this formula so here as we discussed in the last lecture the x square x mn is the nth zero of the bessel function jm okay and now here m so in the rectangular in the rectangular coordinates m n and p they simply denoted number of half period variations in that direction. However, in the cylindrical coordinates, the definition is slightly different. Here, m, which can take values from 0, 1, 2, so on, it is the number of full period variations in theta of the field components. That means you take any field component and you plot it in theta from 0 to 2 pi, okay, any field component E or B. So how many full period variations you have? If there is no variation from 0 to 2 pi, it is 0. If there is one full period variation, it is 1 and so on. N is the number of zeros of the actual field components in the radial direction in the range 0 to RC excluding at, uh, excluding at R is equal to 0. So In the r direction so it is a number of zeros of the actual field component so here you have to take ez the actual field component is ez the actual field component is ez it is along the axis so the number of zeros of the actual field component in the radial direction so how many times this field goes to zero now in the radial uh, in the radial direction the dependence is of the form of Bessel function so if m is equal to 0 it will be j0 or so something like this this corresponds to n is equal to 1 or if uh, n is equal to 2 it could be it would be something like this and so on okay p is the number of half period variations in the z of the field so for p you could take any fields E or B and see its variation in the Z direction from 0 to L. So if there is no variation, P is equal to 0. If there is one full period variation, then P is equal to 1 and so on. Sorry, one half period variation, P is equal to 1 and so on. So these are the Bessel functions. Uh, the, uh, so we have seen this uh, already. These are the uh, variation of the Bessel function. So this is J0, this is J1, J2 and so on. And the values of the zeros can be found out from the table. This is the differential of the Bessel function. And uh, again, these values can be found from the table. Okay, now let's try to understand this uh, again. So uh, M, as I've already explained, M is equal to 
it is the number of full period variations in theta of the field component so you take any field component okay it could be er e theta br b theta any field component okay and you vary it in uh, uh, theta direction keeping r and z fixed from 0 to 2 pi if there is no variation if the field is constant then it means that m is equal to 0 if there is one full period variation then m is equal to 1 and so on now n is the number of zeros of the actual field component in the radial direction in the range uh, 0 to rc rc is the radius of the cavity excluding the zero at r is equal to 0 now if you see the form of ez it is like this okay and notice that whenever it is a tm mode in the cavity and you have an ez field it will always be 0 at so ez will always be 0 at r is equal to rc in order to satisfy the boundary condition okay so this um, the, uh, and the variation is of the form of Bessel function so it depends upon the value of m which Bessel function um, uh, variation will be there if m is equal to uh, 0 then it is j0 if m is equal to 1 then it is j1 okay so here now you can see here that this is the variation in the r direction so here when uh, so here m is equal to 0 so we are seeing the variation of j 0 and here it is going to 0 once at r is equal to rc so this denotes n is equal to 1 similarly here now if j 0 uh, so here again m is equal to 0 and uh, so we see the variation of j 0 and j 0 goes to 0 two times or in other words ez goes to 0 two times in from 0 to rc so here n is equal to 2 now here in this case m is equal to 1 so we see the variation of j1 so j1 goes to 0 twice but by definition we should not count the 0 at r is equal to 0 so this is still n is equal to 1 P is the number of half period variations in the Z of the field. So you take again any field component and you see the variation in the Z direction from 0 to L. If there is no variation, it is P is equal to 0. If there is one half period variation, P is equal to 1 and so on. So for seeing the values of M and P, we can use any field components. However, for seeing the value of N, we have to see the EZ component of the field only. Here are some of the fields, uh, some of the modes in a cylindrical cavity, some of the TM modes. So the most fundamental mode in a pillbox cavity is the TM010 mode. So here M is equal to 0, N is equal to 1 and P is equal to 0. So this figure shows the magnetic field and this figure shows the electric field. So uh, <coughs> M is equal to 0. So if we see if at some fixed R, let's say at this R and this Z, if we see the variation of the magnetic field, so there is this B theta component here which is shown here. So we see that there is no variation in going from 0 to 2 pi. Okay, so if you plot B theta with theta from 0 to 2 pi, there is no variation in the field. So here M is equal to 0. Now uh, n is equal to 1 and also m is equal to 0. So we have to see the variation of j0 for ez with r. So we plot the variation of ez with r. So j0 at r is equal to 0 is maximum here and then the field falls to 0. It has to go to 0 at r is equal to rc. So, so you can see the fields here the electric field the electric field here it is maximum at r is equal to 0 and then it goes to 0 at r is equal to rc so n takes the value 1 here p is equal to 0 <clears throat> that means there is no variation in the field in the z direction so if i see the ez field along the z direction i see that at fixed r and theta there is no variation in the field so ez is constant from 0 to 
Okay, so that is why m is equal to 0, n is equal to 1, p is equal to 0. Now the next mode is tm011 mode. So here now p is equal to 1. The other fields remain the same. p is equal to 1. Okay, so as again if you see the variation of the field in the theta direction b theta there is no variation. So m is equal to 0. If you see the variation of the field at a fixed uh, z and theta. So if you see the variation of ez with r Okay, so you will see that it is maximum at the center and then it goes to 0 at r is equal to rc. So n is equal to 1 and now p is equal to 1. So you have one half period variation in the field in the z direction. So ez, if you see ez here, it is in one direction. Okay, in between ez goes to 0. See, there is no component of ez here. This is the radial component at the center. So, there is this ez component here. It goes to 0 here and then it is in the opposite direction. So, you see here it is maximum in one direction goes to 0 at the center and then maximum in the opposite direction. <coughs> now, the next mode is tm110 mode. So, now here m is equal to 1. So, that means there is one full period variation in the field in the theta direction. So if you see the theta direction here, so if you uh, if you plot B theta because it's the most convenient thing to plot here. So let's start from here. B theta is 0 here. So you can see here there is just the B R radial component here. Okay, it goes to maximum somewhere in the center. Now see this is all in the direction theta direction here, the field here. And then again it goes to 0 here. And then again maximum in the opposite direction and comes back to 0. So if this is point 1, this is point 2, this is point 3 and 4. So this corresponds to 1, 2, 3, 4 and coming back to 1. So you have one full period variations in the field in the theta direction. Okay, now here n is equal to 1 and m is equal to 1. So we have to plot j1 versus uh, r. ez will have a, a variation of the form of j1 here because m is equal to 1. So j1 if you see from the uh, from the graph it is 0 at the center and then it goes to 0 here at r is equal to rc. So again this corresponds to n is equal to 1 because the 0 at r is equal to 0 is not counted. So if you see the field ez with r, okay, so if you see the field, so here it is 0, you can see here it is 0 and then it goes to maximum and then again to 0 here because it has to satisfy the boundary condition. So this is how the field looks like. Again, if you see the ez field along z, there is no variation. So this corresponds to p is equal to 0. Okay. Now the next mode is TM111 mode. So it is similar to the mode above except that now P is equal to 1. So now you have one half period variation in, uh, in the field in the Z direction which you can see from here. Let's take it at this. Let's see the variation of EZ. Let's see the variation of EZ with z at this point at this r and uh, theta so we see that the field is in one direction ez it goes to zero here and then it is in the opposite direction so it is like this now similarly if you have a tm210 mode so now m is equal to 2 here so you have two full period variations of the field in the theta direction so you see this is the theta direction so we can start from here uh, this corresponds to if you plot b theta this corresponds to zero value of b theta so here the field is all radial and then it goes to a maximum here again zero here again goes to a maximum in the opposite direction and goes to zero here then again changes sign and goes to a maximum here and then zero here and then again another maximum and finally to a zero so you have two full period variations of the field in the theta direction for a fixed r and z okay and uh, now if you see the variation of ez so here n is equal to 1 
and m is equal to 2. So you have to see the variation of j2. You have to see the variation of the Bessel function j2. j2 is again 0 at the center and then increases like this and then goes to 0 here. So again uh, it goes to 0 at this point. This corresponds to n is equal to 1 because this 0 is not counted. p is equal to 0. So there is no variation in the field in the z direction. The next mode is Tm012. In this mode, again, there is if you plot B theta with theta, so if you plot B theta with theta, there is no variation in the field. So it is constant, m is equal to 0. Now, uh, since m is equal to 0, you see the variation of j0 for Ez. So here n is equal to 1. So the first 0. So you see that the field is maximum at the center, Ez field is maximum at the center and then going to 0 here. P is equal to 2. So now we have two half period variations of the field in the z direction. So you can see from here, the field is maximum here in one direction. Here it is 0 because there is no Ez component, there is only Er component. Again it is going to maximum in the opposite direction, going to 0 here and then again changing sign and become maximum here. So this corresponds to p is equal to 2. So in this way, the uh, you, you can understand the meaning of the of these in, uh, indexes m, n and p. Now similarly for, a, for the te mode, so the, uh, the definitions of m and p are almost similar. So here ez is equal to 0 and you have the bz field. Okay, And uh, in the cavity, remember, when you have the bz field, the, unlike the ez field, the bz does not go to 0 at r is equal to rc. So here bz is the tangential component which by boundary condition is allowed. So it will not be 0 here. Uh, at r is equal to rc. So it will have some uh, finite value at r is equal to rc. So here again m is the number of full period variations in theta of the field components. This is the same as before. n is the number of zeros of the actual field components in the radial directions in the range this. So same definition with there are some exceptions which I will explain. Uh, p is equal to, uh, now p takes value 1, 2, 3, so on, it is the number of half period variations in z of the fields. Now the difference here is from the TM mode that P does not take value 0, which we will uh, see in a moment. So P is, P cannot be equal to 0. Okay, so uh, here M is equal to 0, 1, 2. It is the number of full period variations in theta of the field component. So M is equal to 0 means any field component you take, no variation in the theta direction m is equal to 1 means 1 full period variations and so on. n takes value 1, 2, 3, so on. It is a number of zeros of the actual field component in the radial direction. So here as I was saying, bz will not be 0 at r is equal to rc. It will have a finite value at r is equal to rc. And again, which uh, Bessel function to see depends upon the value of m. So in this case, for example, we are seeing the value of j0 here, j1. p takes value 1, 2, so on. It is the number of half period variations in z of the field. So p is equal to 0 is not possible. In other words, a te mn0 mode cannot exist inside the cavity. So p, p is equal to 1 means 1 half period variation, p is equal to 2 means 2 half period variations and so on. Okay, so now let's see why p is equal to 0 is not possible. Let's imagine for a moment that p is equal to 0 is possible. So it is a te mode, so you have bz field, okay. ez is equal to 0, you have a bz field. So you have a bz field and uh, p is equal to 0. p is equal to 0 means what? It means that there is no variation in the uh, uh, in the uh, in any of the field components or there is no variation in bz along the z direction, okay. Now, 
at these boundaries at the end walls it is this is a conductor at these walls if you see bz it is the normal component bz is the normal component and by boundary condition it is not allowed so bz has to go to zero at z is equal to zero and z is equal to l so if bz is to be constant along z so here it is zero and here it is zero and it has to be uh, if p is equal to zero it has to be constant along z so that means bz will be zero so now for te mode ez is already equal to zero and if p is equal to zero bz also goes to zero so now you know that er e theta br th b theta they depend upon the values of ez and bz so all fields will go to zero in other words there is no mode for p is equal to zero so uh, hence that is why te mn0 mode cannot exist in a pill box cavity or a cylindrical cavity now again very quickly let's see the modes in a uh, the t some te modes in the cylindrical cavity so we have te 1 1 1 so if we see so here n is equal to 1 so that means one uh, uh, one full period variations in the field in the theta direction so uh, if you see the electric field here and if i plot er so this is uh, er with theta from 0 to 2 pi okay so er is 0 at this point okay here it is 0 at this point er is in one direction and some maximum value again going to zero here and then again it is maximum here in the opposite direction and then going to zero so you see that it has one full period variation in going from zero to two pi okay so this uh, means that m is equal to one now since m is equal to one for uh, seeing the value of n we have to see the variation of j1 so if you plot j1 j1 uh, j1 is 0 at r is equal to 0 and it need not be 0 here at r is equal to rc because by boundary condition uh, it is the tangential component of magnetic field and it is allowed so the variation is like this okay now uh, so this is an exception that uh, uh, to the rule there that uh, it is the number of zeros n is the number of zeros from 0 to rc excluding the 0 at this because now n here cannot take value 0 n is the uh, it is the nth root of the Bessel function jm so it cannot uh, take a value 0 so n is equal to 1 here now p is equal to 1 means if you see the electric field uh, if you see the magnetic field here in this case in the z direction okay so you will see uh, so you will you will see here that it is equal to 0 here and it is equal to 0 here so there is no component of bz here okay because bz is not bz is not allowed at this boundary at these boundaries bz is not allowed so here there is br component then going to bz and this. so if you see the variation of uh, bz with z from 0 to l you have one half period variation <clears throat> similarly te211 mode so here you have two full period variations in er in going from 0 to 2 pi so you can see from here in uh, er so it's 0 here 0 here 0 here 0 here okay so you have two full period variations in so here uh, m is equal to 2 so you have to see the variation of uh, bessel function j2 and n is equal to 1 here again p is equal to 1 here same as before uh, so if you see the t is 0 1 1 mode so no variation in the field in the theta direction and uh, now you have to see the variation of because m is equal to 0 so you have to see the variation of j0 so from 0 to rc so you see that it is maximum here going to 0 here and then again maximum in the opposite direction so which you can see from here it is maximum at r is equal to 0 going to 0 and then in the opposite direction here and p is equal to 1 so you have one half period variation in the z direction 
Then similarly, you can also have a TE311 mode. So you have three full period variations in the theta direction. Now you have to see the variation of J3 with uh, R and P is equal to 1. A TE112 mode. So again here, one full period variations in theta and uh, in the Z direction, there is two half period variations in the field. A TE212 mode, so here you have two full period variations, you see the variation of J2 and here one, uh, two half period variations in the Z direction as above. So this is how you uh, understand the uh, modes in the cavity. So depending on the values of M, N and P, different types of modes are possible in the cavity.